Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Comeback Craig, and today we're talking about 100% VA disability rating the hard way. There's the hard way using the combined ratings table where you have to work with the percentages, and then there's the easier way, which is TDIU. So that's kind of the difference between the hard way and the easier way. Not easy, easier. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp. There's a link in the description below. And if you need medical evidence, which you're going to need medical evidence, if you can't get it from your doctor, hit up my med team. There's an email address below in the description. So today we're focusing on 100% mental health ratings, and we're going to look at the ECFR and look at the actual law, and there's a link for that in the description below so you can follow along. VA mental health ratings come down to functional impairment. Functional impairment is basically the combination of occupational and social impairment. It's actually a term that a VA rater uh, explained to me recently, so this is coming straight from his mouth as well. So when we're looking through the different criteria here, we see groupings of words, and there's two groupings of words here that's a guaranteed 100% VA rating. So if we look through it, it says total occupational and social impairment due to such symptoms as. Once we get to the as, there's a colon, and then there's the symptoms. So you have these things or you don't have these. Gross impairment in thought process or communication, persistent delusions or hallucinations, grossly inappropriate behavior, persistent danger of hurting self or others, intermittent inability to perform activities of daily living, including maintenance of minimal personal hygiene, disorientation of time or place, memory loss for names of close relatives, own occupation, or own name. So this is pretty bad if your mental health is like this. You need to get your symptoms documented by a doctor. You may think you have these things, and you may actually have these things, but if a doctor doesn't write down that you have these things, they're not in a medical record. They can't be used as medical evidence. So we don't want to write our own nexus here, and we don't want to explain all this in a personal statement. You want a doctor to fill out a DBQ or an independent medical opinion opining on what he thinks about your situation and getting it into a medical record. That's how you win this claim. So the phrases I want to focus on here are delusions or hallucinations and disorientation of time or place. So let's start with the uh, delusions or hallucinations piece. So you probably know what delusions are, hallucinations, right? You're going to a CNP exam, most likely. You, you build your claim provide your own medical evidence saying that you have delusions or hallucinations, and then you're going to go to a CNP exam. So, oh, gee, call back Craig, I see you have delusions or hallucinations. And I'm not even paying attention because I'm hallucinating. The reason why this is 100% VA rating is because this is bad. Like you're in the CNP exam and you're not even, you don't even know where you are. And you're hallucinating seeing stuff and, and you're not even paying attention to the doctor. You're, you're off somewhere else. So the CNP examiner needs to see that you're just not even there. You're hallucinating, seeing something else, and not even able to focus on this because you're hallucinating or you're delusional. One example here is you go to your CNP exam. And, you know How do you get this point across to the CNP examiner? If you show up there and you're hallucinating, and the CNP examiner is trying to figure out what's going on, and maybe you can get a few words out, you're not driving to this exam, right? So this is one of the things the CNP examiner is going to be looking for. If you have delusions or you're hallucinating, you're not going to be driving your car. So clearly you're going to have a ride. They're going to be looking for you hallucinating in the exam or looking for other signs. So a lot of these checkboxes on the DBQ don't necessarily convert to, do you have hallucinations? Yes, and then they're going to check the box. A lot of these things, they're going to you know, put down the checkboxes based on their observations. So when we're talking delusions and hallucinations, you're definitely not driving to that exam. So they might you know, pose the question to like, oh, I see you have these things, and I see you have a ride there. You know, like if you drove yourself... That's going to be a hard argument to make. This is one thing to think about if you're going to a CNP exam for a 100% mental health rating the hard way. 
And then the other part here is disorientation of time or place. So again, this is another thing the CNP examiner is going to be observing, right? He's not going to be like, hey, are you disoriented? He's going to be observing what you're doing. You're clearly at the CNP exam, but you have no idea who you are. You, you don't, like, hi, I'm Dr. So-and-so, the CNP examiner. You can't remember his name. You, you, why am I in this office? Like you just have, uh, you know, you're just mixed up. You have no clue where you are. These are two things, disorientation of time or place. That's one of these pieces. And then delusions or hallucinations. And as I mentioned, going to be observations. The CNP examiner is probably going to look at your independent medical opinion that you submitted with your claim, but he's not going to ask you if you have them. He's going to be observing you while you're having them. So guaranteed 100% VA disability rating if you meet the criteria. You have to have these symptoms to get this rating. So I hope this is useful when you're filing your VA mental health claim. Check out my boot camp if you want to learn more about the VA claims process. And if you need medical evidence, hit up my med team. There's an email address in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.